One full moonlit summer night, I was doing my rounds through the woods around the garden, ensuring no white-tailed deer or snowshoe hares were daring go in there. With owls hooting and fireflies flashing in the soft breath of a cool summer breeze, all seemed serene and peaceful, and I was just about to make my way back to the cottage when I looked down and saw it, and at that moment, everything changed. That terrible plant hated by yard keepers and gardeners everywhere, goutweed, had found its way into my yard. It was time to take forage into a whole new level. Foragacio! Harvestium! Delicio! Goutweed was loved and cultivated by the Romans, and as their empire expanded, they spread it everywhere. And because it's an interesting and carefree herb, it has been brought to North America to become part of gardens here as well. It soon escaped the confines of yards and gardens, and spread into meadows and half-lit forest floors. And you know what? I'm glad it did. It's a plant of a million uses. I brought some back to the cottage, and my wife is going to put it to one of my favorite right now. She's going to make goutweed pesto. We'll show you how. To make a single serving, start with about a cup worth of goutweed. Add two garlic cloves, three ounces of sharp cheese, Many recipes call for Parmesan, but we didn't have it, so we just used extra old cheddar. Then add two to three ounces of raw or roasted sesame seeds. As an alternative, I find roasted pumpkin seeds work quite well. And then drizzle just about a third of a cup of olive oil into the mix. You might consider adding dried cranberries or other berries as well. For demonstration purposes, we're keeping this recipe simple. Then just put the blender jar on the motor and grind it fine. Once it is ground up, blend in sea salt to taste. We find about a teaspoon is good. Stir it all up and then let it sit for about 10 minutes or so so that the ground vegetables can absorb the oil. It's good on anything you would use pesto for, but I especially like it on mutton sandwiches. Thinly slice some pugliese or other bread and generously spread some pesto over one slice. On the other slice, drizzle some mint syrup. Or alternatively, you can use mint jelly. Add your sliced mutton. And some fine red tomatoes and good sweet red onions. Homegrown from your own garden is best, of course. And finally, to give it that extra bit of zest, add some sharp, well-aged cheese, Parmesan, very old cheddar, or something else that has a good zip to it. Goutweed is very nutritious and tasty, and it has many other uses. In many ways, you can treat it like spinach. The Romans did, and they thought it was pretty awesome. Goutweed is not terribly hard to identify. If it's gone wild, it may be a little bit more complicated because wild gout weed often loses the variegated leaf color. But as long as it's from cultivated stock, it grows low to the ground on slender stems that typically, at least around here, grow six to nine inches tall. When young, the leaves are joined in one solid mass, but as they grow, divide into three leaflets. As the leaflets mature, they will each split again into yet three more leaflets. The leaves are deeply veined and have a parchment-like feel. And if you crush them, they will give off a fragrance like celery. Goutweed is a member of the carrot family. You can tell when it comes into bloom by the sight of the tiny white flowers grouped together in umbels, which is characteristic of things in the carrot family. Goutweed prefers to grow in the sun, but as you can see here, it is shade tolerant. The goutweed that grows near my cottage has been growing at the edge of these spruces for many years, and it is quite happy to push partly under the shade of the lowest boughs. 